Do not attempt to adjust your computer. There is nothing wrong. We have taken control as to bring you this special show. The Mothership is back in cyberspace. My name is Dobie Maxwell. We had a radio show on WLIP in Kenosha for five, six years, I think it was. Something like that. Uh, riding shotgun to my right, the lovely and talented Greg DeGuire. <laughs> we are in the compound at an undisclosed location somewhere near the 45th parallel uh, in the northern hemisphere. That's all we can say. Yes, not to be confused with anywhere near the 38th parallel somewhere else. And uh, this lovely lady to my left is... Carrie. Carrie's here. We always like to have a woman on the show, so it's not a sausage festival, so we're just kind of having uh, <laughs> uh, a, a fist fight there with all things. We want to have, like, before section in a band, women add stuff that's paranormal that we don't even think of, like, if aliens should land, or will they have curtains on the spaceship? You know, we don't really know. <laughs> you know, they have color they coordinated. In-flight meals? You know, Movies? That's a good. I hadn't. I was so funny. They're only three feet tall, and that one's crash. I, yeah. I always thought that it was that Dad, can I borrow the ship? Don't go to Earth. Oh, Dad, I'd never go to Earth. Fun, fun, fun until your daddy takes the spaceship away. Well, if they're only three foot tall, maybe that's why they crash. Maybe they didn't have a booster seat on the ship. Yeah, they're just kids <laughs> having a good time. Speaking of kids, this is our friend uh, Al, and he's going to be with us throughout the uh, show. We rub his head for luck, and we uh, it'll hopefully do a live uh, presentation at some point. We'll have special drinks. That will look just like that. Green drinks. Green. Easily done. Oh, absolutely. Easily true. done. So what we did in our radio show for five years, it started out, the, the station management said, we need somebody that's crazy enough to pull off a paranormal talk show and stable enough to show up every week. And I got handed the ball because the uh, the person in charge, and you're the only person I could think of. And Greg here came in uh, as a guest with our good friend Gary Panch. Mm -hmm. We'll be on. I'm sure we'll have him on again in the future. be nice to get Gary on for a shout out. Yeah. Gary's uh, now living in the Upper Peninsula. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of, got to be a lot of sightings up there or government conspiracies. Buried bodies, Jimmy Hoffa, mineral deposits. We'll talk about all that kind of stuff. But uh, Gary brought in Greg to do a show about the uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Rocky show. Horror Picture Show. I was brought in as a guest because he was inducting mm -hmm. the Mothership. Used to have a segment called the Mothership Hall of Fame. And we might have it again. Yeah. So right. he was inducting Richard O'Brien, who is uh, author, co-creator of Rocky Horror Picture Show. So he wanted a Rocky Horror expert. I'm not sure how much of an expert I was, but no. I used to perform it weekly at the Oriental Theater up in Milwaukee. Long, 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 long ago. You were an outstanding expert, and I told Gary, I said, you know, I, I saw it a couple of times in my. Did you ever see that movie? Yeah. Did you, you really, your, yeah. your generation digs it? I love it. Really? <laughs> I, my college performed it last year. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Fun. You want to get a franchise again if you write something. Oh, about getting royalty yeah. checks. Yeah. Really cool. Well, I've seen it a couple of times, and Greg came in. He was a fantastic guest. I said, anytime you want to come back, you're welcome to do that. And he came back, and, and he talked intelligently about the Kennedy assassination, mm -hmm. about uh, conspiracy theories mm -hmm. abound, and uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, <laughs> aliens. I'm thinking, how much time could somebody spend in the bathroom reading all these books, man? You are an amazing expert. I call you the super geek in a friendly <laughs> and a customer service kind of a way. I have never met anybody like this, man. And you don't often hear a Star Trek and a Star Wars. Thing. Right, right. They usually fun the person. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly right. Each other. It's a Packers and a Bears fan. <laughs> yeah. Nope, it's one or the other. Well, yeah. I mean, I was always interested in this stuff. I bring it back to my grade school days. Mm -hmm. I went to grade school, uh, and in the library, I always you, we went to the library once a week, so you can pick out a book. So I didn't know what book to pick out, so I just went. Well, I want to start with this shelf, but I'm going to pick the first book off that shelf. And the first book off that shelf was Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. Kicked it off when I was in third grade. Started the whole shebang right then. And I think it was in there already. Kind of, you know, nitro and boom. Yeah. How about you? How did you get interested in the paranormal world? Or did you not? I, Just you knew Greg and that was it? I mean, I grew up watching a bunch of videos on YouTube. And I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, our generation grew up. You know, you see one video and you, it leads you to the next one. And... Now that's why I'm glad you're here, Gary, <laughs> Because my generation, I realized that I'm old. I rubbed yeah. two sticks together to cook and yeah. the whole deal. Slept in a cave. Yeah, I still can't program my VCR. And they don't even make them anymore. It's flashing 12. Yeah. Stuff. I know yeah. what stuff it's like right twice v a day. VHS tapes yeah. And yeah. reel to reel and all these things. And that all that information is just out there to keep going yeah. and going from there. So I'm glad that your generation is here. Because we started on the radio at WLIP. And a lot of times, the average listener's age is dead or older. Yeah. And uh, they're very nice people. And I thought for sure that they would be picketing the station and a lot of little old ladies and widows and spinsters and they absolutely they loved, loved the show and we did and i told the boss there i said i'm not going to sacrifice goats on the air let me just have not this. yet not yet <laughs> Let's do what we do and see how the show develops. And we're really glad it did. And people like Greg came along. We always had a, an ongoing inter, how can I say, inter uh, stellar cast. Yeah. That would come and go. Yeah. So when one of us is, I kind of was the constant for most of the time, but even I was gone at sometimes. And so we will, we will put the show together for you uh, online now. Technology has, in the five years that we've been off the air, we were only, so two years we've been off the air. We were yeah. on the air for five years. Yeah. We wow. saw technology explode steadily and it, and yeah. it will again. Yeah. 
We couldn't podcast like this. Well, we we talked about that uh, a lot when we were on the air. We talked about how to change how the media the medium was changing. How mm-hmm. radio is going more online, more YouTube, more podcast, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So this is just, in in my view, uh, evolution. The last thing you want to inherit is a uh, a radio station tower or a newspaper. <laughs> Right. With the last thing that you really want. It's like, okay, I got an Edsel and I have a blacksmith yeah. shop. Yeah. Now, granted, uh, they still have all these surveys as far as where people get their news from. Mm-hmm. And radio and newspapers still make it on the list. Yeah. So I, I think they're still I think they're still relative, but not quite I mean it's starting to sink if down. Your radio and newspaper look like this. Yeah. That's what everything is right there. Yeah. It's amazing to me. My grandfather was uh, the greatest influence in my life. He raised me. He was my father figure. He died in 1981, which is before you were born. And if I would dig him up for one hour and I get a chance to talk to him, I would show him this. Perhaps you know what this is. He would say, oh, that's a big lighter you got there. <laughs> oh, you are going to light a big cigar yes. with that. What kind and of square would, flashlight is that? I have no idea yeah. what that is. And it was a you that said, I think, that uh, what inside this box is what Radio Shack sold in the 80s. Everything that they sell, it's all now. It's right all right there. there. It's all in one device. And they keep getting smaller and smaller, too. And, and they can do more yeah. and more, yeah. Unbelievable that it is. Well, look at uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino mm-hmm. once said uh, about when handy cams, instead of like movie cameras, like little, uh, like Super 8, 8 millimeter, it's like someone, someday someone's going to make a movie using just a small camera. They don't even need big time movies and quickly thereafter. Now he said that during the making of Pulp Fiction because he would use small cams for pre-visualization. So pre-vis is what they call a movie. So we'll do a test shot, see how it looks. If it works out, we'll get the big camera, make the thing. Shortly thereafter, Blair Witch comes out and shortly thereafter, it's not going to be too much longer before someone makes an entire movie on a cell phone. I mean, that it's coming down. Why can't it be us? Yeah, why not? Why not us? Right now. The Mothership Start. movie. Started exactly right. Well, with all the editing software, movie-making software, with all the it's tools available. that are available to anybody who needs uh, Lucas anymore. Who's got time to live life because you're too busy watching, listening <laughs> to other people's podcasts, reading their blogs. Well, people take it on the go, too. They want to go exercise. They'll pop yeah. their headphones in. They can Good do point. it anywhere. That's why the show, this show is going to be in one-half-hour bite-sized increments. Yes. Mm-hmm. Our show is funny because we started uh, before Greg came around at the radio station, and we were on. They put us on 4 to 6 in the afternoon. Well, you can't mm-hmm. talk about werewolves and unicorns and spaceships <laughs> and interdimensional time travel when the sun is up. It's just impossible to do that. <laughs> and they put us on from 7 to 9. Which worked out pretty well. Better. Like, man, yeah. how, right. how are we going to sell? How are we going to fill two hours with this woo? My buddy called it your woo woo show. <laughs> Let's talk about your woo woo show. How are you going to talk about it for two hours? Then we, we were pretty full, so they added three, a third hour, seven mm-hmm. to ten, and then it became eight to uh, eleven, and then it was eight to midnight. And we had four hours by the time you were in there. And we, four, we, couldn't, we think, couldn't pack it all in. Yeah, if you think about it, like wow, four hours. You must have run out of stuff to talk never. about. That never happened one time. No, it was just constant stuff. And we had great guests, and we're gonna get yeah. we're gonna get some of those guests back and some new guests back. The show Coast to Coast AM, which is like the standard bearer for woo woo shows mm-hmm. on the radio, terrestrial radio. Uh, we have got a lot of the same guests that came on our show because I told yes. people I'm a stand up comedian by trade, so we're not gonna make fun of you if you come on our show, but we're gonna have fun with you. If you got the guts to say that you run a, a UFO with a big green finger giving you the examination, well, we might. We're not gonna make you look bad. We're gonna joke a little bit about it, and we yeah. we. Came across really well. Sure. As we had the fuel air mixture. You are the geek in a good way. I want to be the just a pad. I'll pass the ball to you. I'll pass the ball to you. <laughs> yeah, cool. We'd like to have a woman involved in any younger generation too. Oh, absolutely. I, I it's a win-win. It yeah. is a win-win. <laughs> Total. Yeah. So no. plus, and this is as far as the compound goes. This mm-hmm. is we're going to call this the alcove under the stairs. There's different wings to this set, as we will eventually. We can have different conversations in different parts of this mobile set in in the compound. So this is just one spot so we get other guests and we've got other places to film. So the government told us that if you find out the location of the compound, we have to kill you. Right. And exactly. that would not be fun. The secret compound. No, I left my taser in my other pants. So we can't And it's do funny, that. I, I just found out uh, MASH, one of my all time favorite shows. I'm wearing a another, MASH hat another right another now. Another geekdom that you are fantastic yes, at. If yes. you were just a MASH guy, I'm saying, okay, you can come <laughs> on the show. This is like your pinky finger, you're putting out Hawkeye yeah. references. Yeah. Okay. Well, I found out that that's what they called, where they used to film the back lot of Hollywood, uh, back in the hills where they filmed the outdoor scenes. They called that the compound. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they call lots of things the compound, but I guess I didn't know that that's what they lovingly refer to the back lots as the compound where they film MASH at. So. So that's what we'll call this. And as the, the show <laughs> progresses again, this is the, I, I have seen a lot of things in my time, not that it means anything. This is the most amazing display of pop yes. culture post Oof. 
77. I mean, obviously the first yeah. Star Wars was 77. Yeah. But uh, we've got Simpsons memorabilia. We've got Star Wars. We've got Star Trek. We'll, Harry Potter, shows everything. Yeah. Tune in just for that. <laughs> if yeah. you think our show stinks, look at the memorabilia. It's yes. worth it's anything. We're not just so they exactly. can see everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's eBay to the 12th power. It really is. We'll even do some filming upstairs in the compound, too, yeah. at some point in time. I'm, I'm certain. There's, there's, there's no room in this compound that ain't fun. <laughs> Well, I, I would hope, I don't know who your insurance is, Mutual uh, <laughs> Lucasfilm. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to have George Lucas himself. We're going to freeze dry his oh, yeah. head next to Walt Disney and show that. We'll put him on. Uh, now, behind the scenes, I have uh, an animatronic Homer Simpson. He is, uh, he's a karaoke machine. Does it work? And he, oh, he works and sings and dances. So we can oh. put Lucas's head on Homer's body. <laughs> we'll make a sing and dance. Cool. We, we can't do all the good things in the first episode, though. Teasers, good. little teasers. Teasers, <laughs> teasers palettes. We'll Homer will that. be a guest at some point in time, and you will see him sing and dance. Absolutely true. Now, Carrie, tell us like your field of expertise. What do you What do you like to um, talk about? And so, I mean, I'm working my way through school right now. I'm taking okay. a semester off right. so that I can get ahead on money. But what I like to do in my spare time, this show, you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So plasma, Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I have a blog with 1,500 followers right now. Beautiful. And it all revolves around my daily life, but as well as movies, TV, pop culture, anything. Um, I love everything. Well, that's a good thing because we were, we were supposed to be a paranormal-based show. And he's been getting me into that, too, in the past couple of months that I've worked Well, we're not married to it. That's a good thing. Right. No, if it's interesting, we did a Batman show when a Batman movie came out Ooh. on the radio. That's not really paranormal-related. No. Greg knew about it. Yeah. I liked it. We called it Audible at the line of scrimmage. and said, you know what? We're going to do it. Yeah. And our listeners loved it. It was mainly, at the time, comprised of little old ladies. So well, same thing with the with the Marvel movies that are right now, yes. the Avengers Absolutely. and everything else. Those comics go back to the 50s, so it, 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 it revolves around multiple... Uh, yeah. I think you know, the one thing, without flattering ourselves, I will talk, speak for you and not me, uh, the above average intelligence of people. The world is dumbed down. Mm. The masses are asses. Alexander Hamilton said that in 1790, <laughs> the guy had the $10 bill. Yeah. They were idiots in 1790, and they have crossbred to make a super cockroach race of mega idiots <laughs> that are permeating the world. If yeah. you saw the movie uh, Idiocracy, Idiocracy. Mike Judge. You know, all time favorite films. That's one of the goals. We want to get Mike Judge on it at some point. <laughs> But yeah, just we, be great. we the people that, that uh, listen to our show are above average intelligence, and we're not going to insult them okay. and talk down to them. So okay, if you want to talk about uh, anime, that's your thing. Or is, animation, animation, animation. Yeah. Not, not the Japanese, <laughs> right? Nah, that's not really my. Name. All right, like animation is cool. Yeah. Or, or all the things that Greg talks about, yeah. and I'm thinking, well, I, I'd like to do that too. And the show is was a, a resounding success. And now we really think now that we have the video added on to it, and you're joining us, it's going to be a bigger success. I think Good. that's yeah. how we started talking more too. Like yeah. I would, talking to intelligent people is just something. Yeah, they're getting it's... fewer and far between. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, years ago, I started playing the game Apples to Apples. Yeah, you know, game. we played this board game. I don't. I have that. Card apples. Game. Yeah, it, it's a card game. But but Apples to Apples, if if you play with people of reasonable intelligence, the game <laughs> is so funny. My sides hurt. My cheeks hurt. I have a headache from laughing so hard. If you play that game with not as intelligent people. It's hair pulling. It's mind numbing. They don't know what half the cards mean. They don't know what half the cards mean. It's like, oh, come on, man. So that's how I'm going to equate this. Here's hoping. And if anything, then then we'll bring the others up to our level. We're here to help. <laughs> we didn't talk down to anybody before. No. It worked really well. So we're going to yeah. just keep going. If you can't catch up, well, sorry. Plenty of other podcasts. But I'm sure we're bound to hit on a topic that's going to appeal Maybe not to all, but to some, and then at some point in time, yeah. we'll all come together. Well, it's going to appeal to us, and then hopefully people will come along. And that's really what happened. The fake it. Yeah. And just say, well, yeah. let's talk about this because we think we should. Well, that's how everyone always asks, because I didn't have a radio background. Right. So what I always thought is, if, if I wasn't on the show, I'd, I'd want to listen to it. So if I'm going to be here doing this, I want to make it a show that I would, if I wasn't a part of it, well, I'd, I'd listen to that. That's a good thing. Um, so that's that's how I premise all this. Noticing your show, you guys have endless things to talk about. You don't mm -hmm. run out. We really do. It's amazing how that is. I had the great now you put together a new list of things. I just dug out from my storage unit the yeah. old list. And I mm -hmm. said, okay, we're going to have to fill time every week. Two hours seems so just awesome. Not, not awesome, but uh, uh, overwhelming mm -hmm. at the time. And we did some things like you know conspiracies and JFK. We'll try to make it uh, time of the year friendly. The JFK is in November. Yeah. Now, 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 now with the with the passage of time, there's all new conspiracy theories to talk about that we hadn't thought of before. 
can't wait to die. <laughs> can't wait to die. I mean, nine eleven. How old were you when nine eleven happened? I was four. Right. So it's something like nine eleven. Kennedy, you were not born for Kennedy. I, I was about six months old. So that whole generation before that remembers. We remember nine eleven, and you don't. Uh, partially. Okay. I, I remember little snippets, but I mean, I don't know if we want to save that for the actual episode. But uh, I just, I do remember some stuff from that day. Mm -hmm. And maybe because it was just so important, and I saw my mom crying at one point. Well, the event was such... The thing is, like, everyone knew where they were at when JFK yeah. was shot. Same with September 11th. suspect yeah. for one. Suspect. <laughs> everyone, baby. Yeah. everyone knew where they were at when the planes hit. Yeah. So that's why it's kind of the same thing. And then the generation previous to that, everyone knew where they were at when Pearl Harbor happened. Yeah. So there's always that, that weird moment in history that happens that everyone... Remembered where they were at. Now I think it was when the Cubs won the World Series. Everyone knew where they were in the Cubs won the yeah. World Series. Where were you? Uh, I was at. I get the thing is I'm not that big a Cubs fan. It's okay. So I guess but I it's, don't. It's such a it's such a crazy. I thing. was in my apartment crying because I was yeah. so happy yeah. it happened. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. I was in a Buffalo Wild Wings, and it's funny oh, because God. I was in my car, and I'm notorious for having. Uh, the I, I've had the last count 122 vehicles in my life. Like some people rescue pets. <laughs> I had two vehicles. They're usually the second to last owner before the jump carriage. And I had a car, and believe it or not, I didn't have a radio. The radio just went out. I don't know if it wasn't a fuse, long story longer. And it was the, the Cubs. And I'd get texts when I'm driving. Oh, the Cubs are winning. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. I'm thinking, this is a historical thing. One day there. So I stopped at the Buffalo Wild Wings. And mm -hmm. there was a guy there with his girlfriend who didn't like baseball, but he did. Mm -hmm. And another guy who was a salesman, the same thing. And we're watching it. And I said, you know what? 30 years from now, we're going to remember this day watching yeah. the Cubs winning. Yeah. It was just surreal. When they flashed the, the graphic on the screen, Cubs win the World Series. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, we have, we have passed it. A parallel universe. I actually think I was here at home channel flipping and watching Did all you, the other things. There were people uh, blowing off fireworks across the street. Oh, that's that? right. Yeah. 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 We all ran outside of cheering. It was great. And for those of you watching on the internet, we are in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where the compound is. That's probably what, maybe 60 miles from downtown Chicago, maybe yeah. 50 from take. Wrigley. Give or take. Yeah, it's about an hour to get there. About an hour. Bad. Yeah, it really isn't that bad. And it's right in between Chicago and Milwaukee. Now, you guys grew up here. Did you get Chicago and Milwaukee yeah. TV? Yeah, when I yeah, when I grew up, yes. It, living, living here in town, I was able to get Channel 9, Channel 4, yeah. the whole repertoire. Even what was Channel 7 and Channel 9 were the two Chicago stations and Channel 5. Those, so those three stations out of Chicago, we were always able to get. Yeah, that's... Very much a rivalry thing. It's like Big Brother, the younger siblings, like like New York and Philadelphia. They have the rivalry that Chicago and Milwaukee do, and yeah. Chicago has that rivalry with New York. They're the little brother, mm -hmm. little sibling, younger mm -hmm. sibling. What, what did you prefer? My brother York. Milwaukee, so okay. I, I didn't get a chance to watch Chicago <laughs> Channel Nine. I was talking about Ray Rayner and Bozo the Clown and I all watched, these legendary yeah. iconic things. Yeah. I never saw. Now Ray Rayner, I grew up watching. Uh, and as I got younger, I watched him more because he would have previews for the next Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, <laughs> Ray Rayner and Captain Kangaroo, mm -hmm. uh, one specific morning, we were almost late for school because they were going to show snippets of the new movie Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. And we're like, I'm not leaving the TV. I'm, <laughs> school be damned. I, I'm going to see what happens. Was, so, it, was it like a 30 second promo? Yeah, barely even that. But it was <laughs> Worth enough. It? It was enough to satisfy so the curiosity. Like, yeah. That's it. It's like, oh my God, look at another one. Okay, school on. We can That's one thing I think, too, that has that really progressed from my lifetime to, especially your okay. time, your years, too. And that is uh, the previews of movies. Used to mm -hmm. be you'd see a 30 second or one minute preview. Mm -hmm. Now it's just, oh, there's a date set to release the preview. Yeah. yeah. I never I never thought of it. Because they go from teaser and then to yep. preview yep. and then, yeah. Sure. And then they Full got like trailer, three, half yeah. trailer, yeah. TV, TV spots, yeah. Yep. Now, are you a Star Wars fan? Star I am. Trek? Most Definitely. women are not. I am. Good, that's okay. I always loved it. There's no right or wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, not, not Star Trek? Uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad loved Star Trek, and he loves both, but, I mean, I didn't really watch the television shows. I watched the newer series, like the 2009 movies with Chris Pine, and they were good. The I new Trek them. movies are a lot of fun. They are very good. Yep. Yeah. Well, we got a heck of a franchise. It's hard to, it's hard to mess it up now, because the fans... They're they're going to buy it no matter what they put together, yeah. but they want to make a quality product. <laughs> well, if that if the new if the J.J. Abrams Trek movie didn't work, mm -hmm. it would have ended with that, and that would have been that. It would have been another ten years before someone else picked up, said, "Okay, well, let's that didn't work. Well, let's try it. Let's try it this way." But what J.J. Abrams did is he tapped into he tapped into it. Uh, they went back in time and he he recast more or less the original cast, yeah, brilliantly, brilliantly, and it worked out very very well and went from there. Mm -hmm. If he would have failed at that or he would have miscast it or 
or whatever, it would have it would have it would have stopped. It would have died. Now, what is the first Star Wars movie that you saw? Did you go to the theater? I didn't see any in theaters. The only okay. the first one I wow. saw was Very number seven. But I mean, I was two when the number one came out. So so episode Phantom one, Phantom Menace. Menace. So that I was two. That was what 90... 99. 99, Yeah, ninety nine. So I was two. So I wouldn't really see that one. The second one came out when I was maybe four, and the last one was when I was nine. And I didn't really get into it until I was like maybe twelve or thirteen. So mm -hmm. seven was really my first one. I so saw. you went back and saw the, the four, five, and six. Yeah. And you, and you yeah. like those? Oh, yeah, definitely. My okay. dad and I would just have marathons all day and watch wow. them. So. How about you? Now, what was the first one you saw? <laughs> well, I saw the original back in 77 when I was five years old. Okay. Now, I, are you, my cousin, is, he's a couple years older than you, so I think he was nine, like you, you said. Mm -hmm. And he said he was right in the generation that it was aimed for. It was five? Were you young enough? I was, you, I was old probably, enough to get it? I was probably a little too young. Uh, all I remember, I saw it at the Roosevelt Theater here in Kenosha, and it's no longer there. Uh, but I remember just the space battles. As far as content and characters, I thought it was cool looking. I didn't really understand it. Uh, but at the time, all I had was uh, trading cards, mm -hmm. right? There was no uh, uh, VHS, didn't even exist then. So to further get into the film, you had to get the comic books, the trading cards, get the mm -hmm. action figures. Then you can dive into this thing head first. So when the next film come out... You had already You're played ready. with the action figures, like, wow, this is cool, I can't wait for more. Was there a fan club? How did you talk to other fans? At the time, there was a Star Wars fan club that didn't come around until, I want to say, Empire Strikes Back, and it was called Bantha Tracks. Mm -hmm. So you send in your $5, uh, and you get uh, you get the, the magazine and fan club membership and stickers and patches, all of which my brother has every last one of these things. We got a New Hope patches, which was the original name for Star Wars. Added on to the titles later on, but we had all this stuff. Now it was through Bantha Tracks that my brother got one of the sacred items of, of Star Wars dumb, uh, the poster that was originally supposed to be instead of Return of the Jedi, the original Revenge. title of Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Hanging upstairs in the compound is that poster that we ordered from Bantha Tracks, the preview poster called Revenge of the Jedi. Yes, I possess that poster. It is hanging upstairs. That's we'll, so cool. We'll grab a look at it one of these days. I heard, I heard that the original title for that one was supposed to be Darth Vader, You Egg Sucking Dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they, they You're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, there was, now, you know this. I don't know if you do. And you told me this in the past. There was a name, a, a phantom name of the movie when they were filming uh, it. Ah, yeah. oh. so, so, and, you, you, and they made jackets with that. They made name. jackets with that. If you have the, ja the phantom name, Family Guy, if you watch the Family Guy cartoon series, Family Guy ripped on the stage. They made their own Star Wars episodes, and they called it Blue Harvest. Mm -hmm. And everyone wanted to know, well, where did they get the name from? That was the phantom name of the of Return of the Jedi, more or less, because okay. they were filming a lot in the States. They are filming a lot in Arizona, California. So to throw everybody off, they named the movie Blue Harvest. Yeah. So that's where that came from. Nobody, nobody wants to see that. I think that's cool. That's yeah, so cool. there there are <laughs> production... A few grand movie. Yeah, there are production jackets that say Blue Harvest. That, in my opinion, more than any action figure... More than even a prop from the film itself, a, a grain of Carrie Fisher's hair, uh-uh. A Blue Harvest jacket would be, in my opinion, if it matters anything, would be the ultimate Holy Grail, Ark of the Covenant, Maltese Falcon, whatever name you want to put to it, that would be the it to have. Here's how dumb I am. I lived in Los Angeles for about a year in 1996, mm -hmm. and uh, I have a thrift store haunter. I love rummage sales and thrift stores and Great. estate sales. I'm not a geek. I'm a geek in some ways, but not in Star Wars. <laughs> and I lived on Wilshire and Fairfax in L.A., which mm. is right in the heart of That's in the heart. Mm. And there's a thrift store there, and they had a Revenge of the Jedi poster, mm. you know, movie poster in there, $1. Yep. And I thought, what would I do with that? <laughs> right. And I did not. Sure. And that's the one thing. And after How would you know? I mean, no one's crystal ball is ever going to be that crystal clear. No, but I, I, I should have known that. It was, it was such a huge pop culture mm -hmm. thing. This was probably maybe 1996. You could have just given it to someone. I right. Yeah. Like... I, I, was just, I lived out there. I didn't have a place to put it in. I said, eh. And like, then went back. I said, eh, I probably should go get it. Went back an hour later. Gone. Of yeah. course it was. Whose uh, autograph did you get again? You were telling me about that you had Carrie Fisher's at one point? My brother has Carrie Fisher's autograph. He got that. He got her. He got to her, I want to say, through Bantha Tracks. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, sorry are a little bit more accessible yeah. and I at one point in time had Harrison Ford's autograph but I had misplaced it that was a long 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 time ago and I put it somewhere in my parents house said it'll be safe here last time I ever saw it that's how so, it goes when you're a kid you don't really so chances are it's gone or you well that thing's it. gone to the four corners so uh, I'll never know what happened to that thing now do you think that now, now I'm sure the cast 
pictures have gone just sky high with Carrie Fisher. Now. Oh yeah, especially Carrie Fisher's autograph. That's or... as good for the career. Yeah. When I take it, when I take a bullet, you know, the mud of the ship is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting shot, stopping a robbery. Get yeah. Jeffy's autograph. Get my <laughs> <Pass him out. laughs> What do you want this for? <laughs> Please, wide yeah. flick. But again, these types of discussions, this is what, for future episodes, this is what happens. I always equated our shows to Simpsons episodes. It always starts off doing one thing, and the ending is like, wow, how did they get from here to there? But that's exactly how our discussions have always gone, and that's what I've always relished about. Well, I can't wait for Sunday. Because to real day people myself. do that. If you go into yeah. any McDonald's in America on a Sunday morning, even a Saturday morning, you see a bunch of old men down there mm-hmm. grabbing their coffee cups. The coffee cups. This is what the, the <laughs> sports team should do. This is what the president should do. Yeah. This is what life should do. And then basically we're doing the same thing here. Yeah, and hopefully, I, in, a, in a geeky, yeah. woo-woo kind of way. Yeah. But that's but this is real at the time, top Real radio. People. I mean, this is yeah. this is this is us. This is perfect. And uh, no one's telling us what to do, so that's the good no. thing. The sense yeah, yeah no hierarchy. <laughs> yeah. Well, they weren't there at the radio station either. I don't think no, they listened to uh, us. But then it got to the point where yeah, they didn't know. get in our way. But at the same, now the flip they side, didn't help that, us they either. didn't help us with the damn thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're, we're glad you guys are here. If you want to get a hold of us, what, what is our Facebook page? And we have a. Uh, uh, isn't it under your name right now? Yes, yeah, so at this moment in time, uh, Gregory DeGuire. Uh, but through that, there is a Mothership Connection fan page. Uh, you can find these on Facebook. Uh, I have my own Facebook profile. You can always send me a message, and I can point you in the right direction. Once this show evolves, once we get more, once we get do, going on to better things, uh, we'll have our own emails. If you want to email us questions, uh, I've got a Twitter handle. I have uh, a, I've recently made a Tumblr for us, yeah, so Tumblr, people can send Twitter. asks. I'll put it in the link. Beautiful, below. exactly. Yeah. 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 Another thing, uh, people always ask, where did you get the name Mothership Connection? So we just say it in the first episode. We said it on the radio. Mm-hmm. George Clinton is my favorite musician of all time, and his band's Parliament Funkadelic. It's a long story. They're the same band under two record contracts. They basically came up in the 70s, and their big uh, mar- Mothership Connection was a Parliament album that really broke them through. And they worked uh, arenas, and they landed a spaceship. And then they, they would, George Clinton would come out as a character called uh, Dr. Funkenstein and Star Child. The Mothership Connection was a thing. And I got a chance to meet George uh, mm-hmm. a few years ago. And it's just, I don't know if you ever got a chance to meet your hero. Mm-hmm. I we'll, we'll talk more about that. Yeah. And, and George was just an absolutely <laughs> great guy. I told him about the radio show that we had, and he said, cool. <laughs> he, really, he really liked it. Yeah. So it's a tribute to him. So if you get the uh, album Mothership Connection, you can Google it. Yeah, for you young, yeah, the for youngsters, you young kids. If you've never heard of George Clinton, the P-Funk, Please do yourself a favor. But if you like rap and hip hop, that is the DNA. <laughs> yeah, funk music is yeah. the DNA. Yeah, without the P funk, there would be no uh, rap R and B as we know it today. I mean, they were the they were one of the originators. One of the, of the originators, along with James Brown and Sly Stone. We'll talk about yeah. that maybe yeah. another yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, But just that's where the, the name came from. Check out Mothership Connection album. Definitely. I think around time too. We are right around time. Yeah. This is episode one. That's mm-hmm. Carrie. That's Greg. My name is Dobie Maxwell. The mothership is flying again. Plenty more episodes coming your way. Listen, watch, be part of it. We love you. We'll be back soon. <laughs>